Hello everyone, welcome to Mancinelli's Math Lab. I just wanted to cover the most elementary basic method for reserving. It's also the most widely used um, and accepted because it is simple. Easy to understand is a good thing. Um, so let's get right to it. Please watch the previous video on just sort of the what is reserving, what is the actual, what is actual reserving, uh, before this one to give you a better idea of what's going on here. So first I'm going to bring in this first row because, you know, ground up, how does this sort of thing get started? You pull in some data. This is the hypothetical data I've pulled into the spreadsheet. Maybe I retrieve this data using SQL. I connect to some server. Um, and I write some usually just basic code to bring in these claims at a particular accident year, particular age, depends on the evaluation date. I got the line of business. H3 is actually homeowner's dwelling. So let's bring it in. How would I do that? Well, I want to sum ifs. I want to sum some stuff based off some criteria. What do I want to sum? I want to sum the claim size. I want that array to be fixed. So I hit F4. What's the range? Well, I need to only bring in 2014 accident year. That's what the AY stands for in the upper left. I want to fix that. In this case, I'm only looking at accident year 2014, but you can imagine this, this, this list would go on for a long time. But this is a simplified version. What's the criteria before the accident year 2014? I want to fix the column. So the column needs to be fixed, which is column B. So I hit F4 a couple times. The next criteria is the age. I want to fix that array. So I hit F4. And then what's the criteria? It's that 12 up there. Now here I need to fix the row, which is 3. And then I'm going to close that off. Oh, and uh, OK. Let's drag that over. Now, right now, this is only going to give me the incremental numbers. And I want cumulative, as the title suggests. So I need to add in what happened in the prior period. I want these to build on the prior. So what I mean here is I need to add in what happened at 12 months. So I'm going to add the prior. This will give me my cumulative triangle. So just real quick, what does this mean? This means we're looking at a common evaluation date, by the way, of 2020. So this is like as of December 31st, 2020, we're looking at a bunch of claim data uh, oriented this way. What does this cell mean? This means these are the claims corresponding to accidents that occurred in 2014 24 months out of, of 2014. And just a few things on that. Um, well, I'm, not gonna, I'm trying to make things concise, so let me just leave it at that for now. But basically, what we want to do here, as I've said, and I will say many times, is I want to use historical experience to predict the future. So I want to know, how have these things been increasing? By what percentage is the increase historically from 12 months to 24 months? It looks like it's about doubling. So how do I get a percent increase? Well, I could take the quotient and subtract one if I want, or I could just look at the quotient in general and say that as a factor, if I multiply 382 by 1.911, I get to 730. Now I want to apply this all over the place. So let's uh, bring that over. So what I just did is Alt E S F. So I want to copy paste formulas. I get some errors. I don't like the errors. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do if error. If there is an error, because I'm dividing by zero in those instances, I'm going to make it blank. <coughs> OK. Uh, now I have some zeros right here that I also don't want. This is just from taking zero divided by nothing. Let's just get rid of these real quick. One way to do that, you can bring in a formula to make them be gone, but I can also just, um, I'm going to click the first one, hold down control, click all of these while control is held down, and then delete. They're all gone. Wonderful. Excuse me. Now, these, this is the percent increase from 12 to 24. So you can see historically, well, they've been kind of decreasing, interesting, 
but they've been between 1.8 and 1.9. Now going from 24 to 36, the losses have been developing by about 20%, right? They kind of fluctuate. And you can see as they go on, they kind of taper off. Here they're not increasing at all. Maybe we can assume that these losses have developed fully. And by the way, this is extremely hypothetical Hypothetical because dwelling property is usually a short-tailed line of business, meaning that they develop pretty quickly just after a couple of years. As you can see, these losses are still developing after 72 months, which is about six years, right? So this is, this is all just hypothetical. I made stuff up. But uh, hopefully this will, will add some value in terms of understanding the technique. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking a simple average. I'm saying, look, historically, you know, the past three years, these things have, on average, increased by about 86%. Now, what is the weighted average? This is basically taking, you can take uh, the three-year weighted. So take these three items and weight them with these lost development factors, these age-to-age -age factors. Um, and you can get this other type of average. It's the same thing. It's equivalent to taking the quotient of uh, the subsequent um, cumulative claims divided by uh, the, the aforementioned cumulative claims, so at 12 months. So I have these averages, and in real life, you may have several more types of averages. You may have like a five year, you may have a five year excluding the high low. You may have all kinds of averages, but in this case, I just have two for simplicity purposes. I'm selecting the simple, the three year simple, and I want to make cumulative development factors. And the way I do that is I'm just looking at, for this case, the product of all of these. And conceptually, I hope to shed light on this here in a minute. Um, again, this number is just the product of all of these. So this right here, 12 to ultimate, this is saying that, now now what loss is that 12, is that month at age 12, the 385? This is saying, based off historical experience and based off the selected age to age factors that I've determined, this 385 would need to be multiplied by 2.333 in order to get to its ultimate value. In order to get here, we need to multiply by 2.333, if the historical data is any indication of what's going to happen in the future. So that's what I'm building out down here, the ultimate losses. Now 2014, as you can see, it's already, well, it's already developed because at 72 is 9.30, at 84 it's 9.30. Hopefully all of the losses that occurred in 2014 are fully developed at this point in time. Now we actually have a name for all of the losses that are not yet, that have not yet um, been incurred. We call them incurred but not reported. So all of these, when we when we figure out this 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 ultimate, which I have right here, now what, again, this is 2.33 times 385. So that would that would literally kind of go like right here. So what I'm saying is, based off this method, and based off our historical data, and based off these age to age factors and what I've selected, we expect the 385 to turn into 898. Once it's all said and done, we, we need to we need to know what for accidents occurring in 2020, what will they ultimately be in the end? Hence the term ultimate losses. Now this difference, the difference between this ultimate number and the 385, this is the IBNR. I don't know why, oh yeah, this thing, of course, yeah, just get out of here. Right, I don't care about that. This is the IBNR, this is incurred but not reported. These are the losses that are going to happen, but haven't happened yet. <laughs> and IBNR can also be broken up into IB and ER, incurred but not enough reported. So in other words, development on known claims and IBNYR incurred but not yet reported because there are also going to be claims that have just not yet reported. For occurrence policies, which I'm looking at here, we can have a claim that occurred in, say, June 2020 but was never reported until June 2021. And the carrier would still be on the hook um, for that claim, assuming it was, you know, not fraud or something like that. So hopefully this 
illustrates what I'm getting at here. Um, just to give you a uh, more sense of kind of what's going on, what w based off what I've done so far, what would I expect, say, uh, this value right here, what would I expect the accident year losses in 2020, the accident year 2020 losses to be in two years? Well, I would expect them, I would expect the 385 to, uh, to develop by what? Well, uh, I chose the simple, let's see, so this is 12 to 24, and then it would have to go 24 to 36. So I would expect these, and these are kind of in line with what you've seen historically, right? So that is, I think, reasonable. So hopefully what I'm doing makes sense, right? I applied uh, the 12 to 24, and then I applied the 24 to the 36. So based off historical experience, the 385 from 12 to 24 increases by uh, 1.867, and then from 24 to 36 increases by 1.22. And that would give me kind of what I think the losses will be after a couple of years. So I think I'll end it here for now, but again, this is just the most basic um, concept and more of the details and terminology and whatnot hopefully will bear out in future videos. Um, so hope you found it helpful and I hope to see you next time in the next video.